Hi, this is Dr. Wooten. This presentation is on regression in the 21st century. It's a more detailed look at my methods. I don't think the short video yesterday did it justice, so I want to go ahead and give a little bit more explanation into it. It started with a problem that did not have a measured response. That was, we had measures of the emissions from fossil fuels, from liquid fuels, and other various locations where carbon dioxide is emitted, but we did not have the total sum because there might be interactions between those productions, and therefore we started discussing what if there was not a response. So if there is not a response and you have codependent relationship among measured variables, then it can be balanced by the constant. That is, if we have measured variables and we have an unknown response variable, then what we can assume is that this constant is normally distributed with a known mean and standard deviation, a common assumption among variables. Hence, we can find a function such that unity, or 1, is the balancing constant to this equation. The expected value of unity is 1, and the variance of unity is the covariance of the unmeasured variable. So this has several applications. Starting with univariant, you can use this method to compute r-squared. This r-squared is the same r-squared you would get in standard regression, and it relates the variance and the means to the sums of squares. So the coefficient of determination in a univariant model is the percent of the sums of squares that is explained by the mean. Therefore, as r gets closer to 1, the variable becomes more constant. And as r gets close to 0, the variable becomes more variant. If you consider normal distributions and the coefficient of variation, the larger the coefficient of variation, the less constant the variable is. That is, the bigger the standard deviation compared to the mean, the more the data is considered to vary. If you consider uniform probability distributions, it has a similar behavior. This method can also be used to detect conic sections, such as circles. Consider the following simulation. We have two variables changing over time, as illustrated in the picture. Then if we use non-response analysis, we can fit this model and eventually use it to estimate the radius of the circle, but we can also use it to fit the probability distribution. Consider the hurricane data that we discussed in our last video. If we know that the relationship between wind speed and pressure has an interactive component, we can set it equal to unity, the unmeasured variable, fitting the model using the expected value of unity. In addition to describing the relationship between wind speed and pressure with an interactive element, we can also then use this fitted model to discuss the probability distribution, creating conditional marginal probabilities and an overall bivariant probability distribution. There's a lot of various points to my method that I could discuss. In fact, I'm working on a book describing my methods and how they relate to standard regression. Given here is a list of references of the papers I've written that use non-response analysis or implicit regression in some form. If you have any questions you'd like me to address regarding my method, please contact me. Thank you for watching.